name is Madhuri Upadhyay. I am delighted to be hosting a set of great sessions and throughout celebrating a musical day with World Music Day. Let's get ready and begin the morning already as we celebrate the World Music Day, also celebrating the World International Yoga Day. So lots of love, lots of laughter and great memories. Let's get all this together as I welcome to you a very amazing speaker. An absolute is just a term till you define this man who come joins us with the experience he holds. I'm happy, delighted and honored to welcome and start the session here of All Music Day, the Music Inc. 4.0. With us is President and CEO, Indian music industry, the one and only Mr. Blaze Fernandez with us right now, who's going to talk on a case for free market economics in the Indian recorded music industry. Hello, sir. Good morning to you and happy World Music Day. Thank you, Mitin. Thank you very much, Mitin. Happy World Music Day to all our industry colleagues, people, our friends, family, well-wishers and fans who've kind of joined in from various parts of the world. But then before I kind of, you know, even start my, uh, my keynote address, that's kind of, you know, in normal circumstances, we would have stood up in mark of respect, but let's kind of take about 30 seconds off and maybe you probably can play a more somber tune to spare a moment for family members, friends, colleagues, frontline workers who are with us at the last World Music Day and you know, COVID-19 has taken them away. So let's kind of spend some time because you know, this time you know, there are family members, there are friends, there are industry colleagues, a lot of our colleagues across the industry, advertising, music, et cetera, film have no, you know, are no longer there today. Let's kind of, you know, Play for them something which is you know, in their memory. No, well, small this thing. That's a, that. Rather than silence, let's kind of honor them with a nice musical note in their memory. Thank you. Thank you, Mithin. And on that note, congratulations, Anurag, uh, Ruhel, and the entire E4M team, Music King team, for, I mean, four years. Okay, time flies, but hopefully next year, if all of us get, get vaccinated, I think the industry has a role to play. I'll come to that later. We'll meet in a physical format. Before I kind of jump into my keynote, you know, I'd also like to kind of send a message across to the industry and the entire ecosystem that we need to use our talents to spread the message of vaccination and, you know, try and get as many of our colleagues, our colleagues, family members, our colleagues, you know, people who work with us, especially the blue collar workers, the temporary workers, the janitorial staff, the security staff, and their family members, inoculating them is not enough. So I think let's take it upon ourselves as an industry to try and A, spread the message of vaccination and B, you know, each one of us, if we can kind of take that, I'll try and get, you know, four people vaccinated outside my family. I think, you know, we'll be able to meet in the physical world rather than the digital world next year. Uh, my keynote address for this session is the, you know, the ad, what I'm advocating for is a case for free market economics in the recorded music industry. If you go to the IMI website, this report is available. I do not want to make this into a presentation because it'll kind of get monotonous and be a lecture, but the entire report is available in the public domain. 
this report was authored by me with good support and solid support from Ritula and uh, Dima in, uh, in, in the IMI team. And you know, Dima and Ritula were backed by Arya and Jenil. So I drew parallels because, and the reason why I drew parallels is, uh, Rohel, I think you're, you need to mute your, your mic. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I do parallels because film across the country and music are conjoined twins separated at the Kumbh Mela and then eventually land up on the silver screen. Depending on market to market, 70% of uh, 70 to 80% and you know, year on year, depending on, you know, uh, you have, uh, you have, you know, the eco, uh, 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 some film music in India is film based. Okay, OSTs, they call them soundtracks, or, you know, or, lay, or, or you know, audio rights, whatever you want to call it, but it's film based. Now, if you actually see, you know, reforms in the film industry, and I I was part of that in the early part in the late 1990s and the early part of the century has actually taken the film industry to a 19 to 20,000 crore industry. And I'm talking about 19, 2019 because that's the last normal year. I'm not getting, you know, you can come back, you can come back to me and say, but 2020 was a washout. Yes, yeah, sure, that's not a normal year, but the best year was. 2019, everything was normal, life was normal, we lived a normal life, and the film industry was at 19,000 crores. And the music industry in 2019 was struggling at 1,200, 1,300 crores. And when I looked at the numbers and I said, what is it that actually strangulates our growth? You know, if the film industry has moved on, 70% to 80% of music in India is film based. Why is one industry surging ahead and the other industry is being strangulated? And I think the, the, the discovery in that report was the film industry by and large had an absolute free run. No government, in, you, know, you know, in terms of entertainment tax, tax is part of life, you know, you pay a tax, when you're born, you pay a tax, when you die, it's an even playing field. It's not specifically that Hindi films are a tax, uh, Tamil films are not tech. It's it's a level playing field. Uh, they got of you know there was no price mechanisms in terms of price controls, and because of free market economics in a nutshell, today you have a twenty thousand crore film industry. That's the first part. The second part is look at the, you know and they call it the flywheel effect because the flywheel is once the big wheel starts moving, all the wheels within the wheels starts you know, moving at the same pace. Today, you have the multiplex boom because there were free market economics, investments came into infrastructure, more employment was generated. Because of more employment was generated and there were more screening opportunities. I remember when I released a good film like LA Confidential, which was a fabulous film. You know, I got one show in Sterling Cinema at 10 o'clock in the night and the film lasted for one is two weeks after that, it was removed at like 95% capacity. Today, multiplexes have seen new genres emerge. Today, multiplexes have seen films travel from the north to the south and south to the north, as a result of which the entire ecosystem was built up. And most important, a rising tide raises all boats. So if you check in that report, you will see what a spot boy was making 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and now. What a driver, you know, what they call, you know, the people who are the drivers in terms of the vanity vans, et cetera, et cetera, was making in the period of time. And every, you know, a rising tide rates in all ports. So while you probably had, you know, huge increases in terms of wages and fees charged by the stars, the entire ecosystem benefited. And you also got very powerful genres being made, you know, in terms of English English, in terms of, you know, you've got new stars who emerged and, you know, discovery took place in terms of new stars, new talent, and the entire ecosystem benefited. You had a Bahubali who came in from the South and captured the imagination of the entire part, in, in part of the North and throughout the world. 
And my plea to the government of India is, let these free market economics play out in the recorded music industry. The first thing today is, it will attract domestic investments, it will attract international investments, it will attract infrastructure investments. At the end of the day, when you had free market economics in the music industry, you had global giants like Village Roadshow came up and uh, set up the first multiplex at I, you know PVR Saket, which was the old Anupam. That's the first multiplex, not the second one at Saket. And today, because of that, you have an entire infrastructure. And if free market economics in the music industry happens, you'll have a vibrant live economic economy system. You'll have people like AEG coming up and setting up an O2 in Manchester United, Manchester, uh, Manchester Arena in, in India. You probably have festivals like, you know, uh, the festivals that you have all over the world. And to cut a long story short, if you actually see the data that is available in the film in, in, in my report, you know, today it's not only the film industry, but the entire ecosystem in Europe, which runs into a few billions of dollars, which is like 10 times more than the film industry, because that includes the, uh, you know, sale of ticketing revenues in terms of live concerts, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, and lastly, uh, exports. Uh, the British film, in, uh, the British PPI, the British uh, Music Industry, which the IMI not, uh, equivalent, uh, Jeff Taylor has said that 500, 500 million pounds is what the British music industry earned in terms of exports. And by 2030, which is like, you know, nine years away, they're going to touch a billion pounds, a billion pounds on exports, not on domestic consumption. I think given our diversity, given our cultural strengths, given the fact that our music is melodious, our music has soul, India can be amongst the top 10 markets with ease if these economic reforms take place and they take place soon. And I think, I think this is what we are advocating for as an industry. A rising tide rises, uh, it raises all the boats. And I will stop here because I've just been 15 minutes. So I will stop here and I'm happy to take questions from my co-panelist on the panel. Thank you. The report is available on the IMI website is www.indianmi.org. So please do visit the website and the report is available. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blaze. That was indeed very straightforward. I like how you make your point about music in the industry and in the fraternity, but I like how you mentioned one word. We are a country where tax is part of our life. So uh, I, I had just one question, if I am permitted to ask the question. Oh, sure. 2020 and 2021 saw a rise at the same time it saw the depth of music going down in a country and globally as well. But in the year 2022, which is the coming year, where do you see the new uh, music genre or the new musicians coming and uh, trying to establish the market in these unprecedented times and when the things get better. Okay, so I think, you know, in India, we had a slight dip in terms of our growth rate because of the pandemic. Globally, I think the industry was about 5-6% in terms of growth. But it's not, you know, it's not about the pandemic, pre-pandemic or post-pandemic. It's something called what they call the smartphone. Currently, we have an ecosystem depending on who you talk and which report you read, but for the, for, you know, brevity, let's kind of take 450 million smartphones. Within the smartphone penetration is now going into the B, C, D, E centers of India. Nobody knows how they consume the music, what they're going to consume the music, but I think there's going to be a lot of the regional genres. There's going to be a lot of focus on the sub regional genres. I think, Atul, you need to mute. Thanks. It's going to be a lot of focus on sub region genres. So, for example, in Maharashtra, where we are sitting right now, there is like five or six very distinct dialects. True. Okay. And, you know, and each of these dialects have their own culture. Each of the dialects have their own heritage. The Konkanis have one heritage. The Kolis have another. And Vidarbha, Maratwada, Sandesh, Western Maharashtra, they have their own distinct. So, I think 
not 2022, but going forward, you're going to see the emergence of, you know, the local players, the regional players emerge. And, and that's my that's my prediction. And I, that's why I said that, you know, in my, the cover of our report is the entire length and breadth of the country with 26 languages, and 26 distinct cultures. And that's my, you know, that if I'm to do crystal ball gazing, that's that's what I would what I would put on the table today. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Blaze. One last question, rather a thought that I want to ask you is, uh, World Music Day, if you had to put words together for on a quote to describe World Music Day, what would your quote be? And my pen is on with a piece of paper, and I want to make a note of a quote that you think suits the best for the World Music Day. Music is therapeutic. It cuts across caste, creed, religion, and race. Last year, we all, last year, we all kind of shook a leg to Jerusalem, which came from the African continent. Who knows? The next, uh, you know, couple of years ago, we were kind of, you know, music is therapeutic. Music is therapy. And especially in these times where you need therapy in terms of, you know, you can have all the vitamins, you can have all the B3s and the vitamin Cs. But I think music is therapeutic. What a, what a lovely thought there. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, music is indeed therapy and it can cure anything and everything your way, mentally, physically, or emotionally. There's always an answer and solution with music. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us here this morning. Indeed, great to hear from you. And I love your thought, very straightforward thought about the music, about Indian music going forward and what's going to come our way. I wish you a great day. Happy World Music Day and a very happy International Yoga Day as well and a lot of luck. Be safe and take care of yourself.